set. Roll camera. Sound speed. Mark, please. And action. Welcome back to Students in Focus. I'm Katie, a student producer for UEN TV. In this show, we focus on student work from all over the state of Utah. This week, we travel to the heart of Utah's rural communities, where we'll get the opportunity to hear from student filmmakers who are a part of the Voices of the West Apprenticeship Program, powered by SpyHop Productions. This program travels through rural regions of Utah for a week-long workshop. The student pieces featured today will tell us the stories of the remarkable individuals shaping communities of rural Utah. Our first feature is by Alex, Leia, and Seth. Zeba and Dizgi Elementary features Principal Amato in Monument Valley. Here's her story. Yadze Shee Heather Amato Yanisha, but Anina Slant Tachini Bashes Chin, Ezathana, Deshanelado, Tordichini Dashache. Hi, I'm Heather Amato. I am of the Folded Arm People, born for the Red Streaked People. My maternal grandparents are the Bitterwater people and my paternal grandparents are the Mini Goats people. I am excited for the new school year. I think it's going to bring um, partnerships with our families, our students, our community, the health center. I'm excited to create that um, relationship with all of the people that want to be a part of our school and to get to know the students we have 240 students, and I am excited to learn all of their names. <laughs> My thoughts and feelings about being the new principal are <laughs> excited. Um, I'm super excited. I want to be able to elevate the voices of the students here and letting, and letting the, the community tell us what they need. Um, and I feel like I'm a very good listener so I think that we can accomplish that one thing in this, in this first year. And um, if it's just listening to the needs of our community, I'm okay with that. Um, so I'm excited and ready to listen to what the community needs and our students. I plan on making the school better by providing a safe place for students to go. In my experience, I was um, grown, and, I mean, I grew up here, and I thought that school was one of the best places to be just because um, I could learn a lot about myself and through the books that I've read, through the writing that I wrote, um, and, it would, and I want that to be something that the, the students have here as well. Some of the new things that I'm excited to implement here at Sebin Diske Elementary would be uh, going back to your question number two, creating those partnerships with the community. I feel like our community should be involved in the academics of our students and inviting them to be a part of that process to know like how to get the help that they need outside of school. Um, and, and asking those questions that their families might have, that, that um, there needs to be a partnership between community um, resources and the school as well for, to allow our students to be successful. Um, and I'm looking forward to that, to creating that bridge between our school and the different communities, um, the different facilities in our area, like our welcome center and our clinic, our community um, health clinic, and so I feel like that would be one of the new things that's going to happen. I that some of the changes that our school could use um, go along the lines of implementing more of the culture and the language within our instruction. I feel like our students have a lot to teach our teachers who come from all parts of the world, from different parts of the world, and um, our students, they're the experts, and they need to be able to share what makes this community unique, and they should be able to do that with the teachers.
Hello, yat e I'm Brenda Bial. She e Brenda Bial in Shia, as she hen slow kia ani bashish chin, to a hane e dashiche, to a red lini e dashinale. In Navajo, I just said I'm born into the Salt Clan and born for the Towering House people. I'm here with my fellow educator, Callie Flox. Hi, Brenda. I love how your traditional introduction identifies your ancestral connections. Thanks, Callie. Kinship or eh, is a way of life for the Diné or Navajo. Our clans define who we are and build relationships. You've taught me a lot about the five tribal groups and the eight sovereign nations in Utah, and we've been teaching that in schools across the state. Students are often interested to learn that sovereign means having the authority to be your own government. Tribal governments are unique. Whether it's a large tribal nation or a smaller band, each exercises its sovereignty by choosing its own leaders and laws to govern its land and people. To help me remember the, the names of the five tribal groups in Utah, I came up with the acronym Sung P. S is for Shoshone, U is for Ute, N is for Navajo, G is for Goshute, and P for Paiute. Here is another way to also remember the eight sovereign nations of Utah. Take your hand with the palm facing out so you're looking at the back of your hand. Now, if you think of your hand as a map of Utah, your thumb can remind you that the Navajo Nation is in the southeast. Your pinky is in the north. That represents the northwestern band of Shoshone Nation. The three fingers in the middle represent six more tribal nations in Utah. Your next finger down, represents the Confederated Tribes of Goshute Reservation and the Skull Valley Band of the Goshute. This finger can remind you of the Ute Indian Tribe of the Uinta and Ure Reservation, which is located in the East Central re region of Utah, and the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe, which is located in the Southeast. Your pointer finger is the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah and the San Juan Southern Paiute Tribe. And that's how we remember the names of the eight Native American Sovereign Nations of Utah. To learn more about the indigenous people in Utah, visit uen.org slash American Indian. Do you have a film or media event coming up? We'd love to hear from you. Visit our website at uen.org slash students in focus to share with us. Up next is USU Blanding by Evan, Kyle, and Wyatt. This documentary celebrates the history of Utah State University Extension in Blanding, Utah. We hear from Russell Keith, the admissions office recruiter, who is helping students get excited about opportunities in higher education. My name is Russell Keith. I'm the recruiter. I work out of the admissions office here at Utah State University in Blanding, Utah. And I get to go out and talk to students about why higher education is important. So USU Blanding was founded in 1977. It actually goes back prior years to that in the planning and development, but the first full year of classes was in 1977. We focus uh, a lot on our um, getting students to the, complete their associate's degree, um, bachelor's, master's, doctor degrees, and we have a lot of students who come for our certificate programs who wanna get in, get something done fairly quickly and, and get to work right away. But we're willing to help anyone. We have traditional students coming straight out of high school, students who may have, you know, been away from school for a while, as well as, you know, parents, uh, even grandparents who come back and wanna finish a degree or change careers in their life. Depending on what building you're in, it kind of caters to that. We have our building, or our technology building, which has, you know, the computer lab and things like that. And then we have our health science library, which houses the library, of course, and then some of our health and science classes like nursing, 
um, biology. Um, so those are depending on what students are going into, what classes they are, it'll be a different building for each of them. Um, other buildings that we have off campus, of course, are Health Professions Building, which houses our uh, medical lab, technicians, pharmacy tech type programs. And then another building off campus is our heavy equipment and, and trucking buildings, where they focus on programs such as those, including our welding. USU Blanding serves about 500 to 600 students average every year. That includes um, everyone from traditional to non-traditional students, uh, current high school students who are doing concurrent enrollment classes. The majority of our students come from the Four Corners area. Um, as I travel out, I go anywhere from Durango, Colorado, down to Gallup, New Mexico, over to Page, Arizona. We've had some from California, Northern Salt Lake um, and a few other distant locations, but the majority are from the Four Corners area. I think something that USU Blending offers that other campuses may not is the rich culture and Native American history. Uh, the majority of our students here are Native American, um, probably like 70%, 75%. Um, that are living on campus are Native American, and the total um, is probably about 60, 65% of Native American students. So we have, um, that's something that sets us apart from other campuses that, that other campuses may not offer. So I think Blanding is a great location in the Four Corners area. The importance of having it here is that we bring in a lot of students from the Four Corners area. Um, one of the main things in this area when this whole system started was they wanted to be able to offer programs to people who were living out in rural areas so you know people from Blanding, Monticello, Bluff, um, out onto the Navajo Nation it was important for them to have access to education and so that's probably the main the biggest factor of having a campus here in Blanding is to be able to make that accessible to a lot of those students who may not have that opportunity otherwise. And not just students, but commu the community in general. One of the best activities, in my opinion, is our disc golf course. We have a nine hole course here on our campus. Um, I think students kind of take advantage of that as well as the community. Um, and then activities for, for our students would be um, a lot of Native American traditional things, uh, songs and dances, um, hand game, shoe game, uh, things like that, as well as just basic you know, activities, water gun fights, balloon fights, uh, dances, bead making, whatever it may be. There's just tons of different activities that happen all year long. Calling all student filmmakers! The Utah Film Center and the Utah Education Network have teamed up to bring you the second annual Tumbleweeds Kids Film Competition. Join us for a week full of student film screenings, panel discussions, workshops, speakers, and more. If you would like a chance for your film to be featured at the festival, and you're a Utah student in kindergarten through eighth grade, create a short film, five minutes or less, about any topic that interests you. Submissions must be received by March 1st, 2024. Prizes and awards will be announced at the Tumbleweeds Film Festival on April 19th at the Viridian Event Center in West Jordan. For more information, a full list of contest rules and a schedule of festival events, visit tumbleweedskids.org slash film dash competition. We can't wait to see you on the red carpet. Share your unique perspective with the world through digital storytelling. Learn more at uen.org slash students in focus to have your media considered for an upcoming episode of Students in Focus. 
So, did you do the homework? Crap. Uh, I forgot you, to. You forget. Um, can I just see your notes and I'll quickly do it? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been signing so much homework. Oh, this cute little video of the squirrel moved in with this rat family. And it was Aww. like one of them. Girl. A little bit of mysticism to the point where he felt a bit elevated. Like that, and oh my god, oh my god, stop, stop! I signed up for audio apprenticeship as I wanted to expand what I could do with music and also just get to know more about how I could make it. I signed up because I really want to do audio as a career and this is just kind of helping further my knowledge. I heard animation and free class. <laughs> There's this really cool place called Spy Hops and I kind of fell in love with it. Some of the first skills I learned was how to use your voice. As well as like how lighting works, how to build a camera and stuff like that. Uh, I've learned to empathize with the audience more, which has helped me to draw more people in so they'd be more willing to see what something's about. I feel like you learn a lot more than you do in like you would in a college class because you get hands-on experience in everything that you're doing. It's a really good environment. It's a very good community. I feel like self-expression is like really empowered here. You're not scared to be who you are around people. The environment is so great. Everyone here is so nice and accepting and like we're all just like trying to follow our passions and learning and growing from each other. Everyone's great. <laughs> Super happy, chaotic, fun times. <laughs> <laughs> Our final piece for today is Blanding Elementary After School by students Ella, Jax, Zero, Nate, and Azrael. They interview after school site coordinator Chantel Valdez to learn more about this valuable program in their community. So my name is Chantel Valdez. I am the after school site coordinator for Blending Elementary. Um, I've been the site coordinator for the last few years. Uh, previously, I was the grant coordinator for San Juan School District, see, overseeing after school programs. Um, working with kids. I've always loved working with kids. I, um, even growing up, I was always the one gathering all my nieces and nephews and my uh, cousins. We'd all hang out together. I'd always have art activities, things like that for them to do. I just have always liked kids. And then after I had kids, I was like, hey, we can work with kids. These the after school program provides. So we provide a variety of um, activities that kids can participate in. We aim to provide um, those opportunities that they may not see inside of the regular school day. Um, so we try to just broaden what they are able to experience. I hope that kids get from our program or are able to achieve in their futures is that they're able to have a better um, idea of what is available to them. I think sometimes kids don't have as many opportunities to explore different job um, avenues or different careers um, so we hope to be able to show them that there is more out there and that maybe spark some interest in something that they'd never see before. I, I think after school programs are important. I think that after school is extremely important to um, working families, to parents who need a safe place for kids to be after school. I think that kids 
need structure occasionally and I think that we provide a safe and fun and engaging place for them to be where they're not just at home bored with nothing to do. So the difference between our after school program and just the regular school day is we are we, while we try to be an extension and hit on all those same to topics that are um, learn during the school day, we want to provide a more fun and engaging way for them to solidify those skills that they are learning. So the school day may not have the opportunity to have a more hands-on approach and so we try to help them apply those concepts that they're learning in the school day to real life examples or to games or to just play. I coordinate with the school day um, to ensure that we are providing academic um, support for those students that need it. Um, I also coordinate with community partners to make sure that we are um, connecting families with resources in the area. Uh, we also partner with different um, institutions like USU University, uh, the Extension. Um, we've partnered with UNHS in the past, just all these different um, places within the county to provide kind of a well-rounded program so that kids have an opportunity to see what is available to them. Hands-on learning I think is extremely important just because it gives them, I think there are some kids who learn better that way when you are able to hold something in your hands you're able to see it and how all the parts work um, as opposed to just having it spoken to you or having to write it out a million times. Um, I think just that hands-on approach I think for some kids is extremely beneficial and it's a fun way for them to remember it. Um, if you give them a fun way to remember something, they're more likely to remember it down the road. Well-trained journalists are important to democracy. I'm Dr. Jean Norman, journalism professor at Weber State University and a founder of the Utah College Media Alliance, and we believe in the power of good journalism. A partnership of student media organizations at Utah's universities and colleges, the Alliance promotes student media and journalism at the high school and college levels. We share resources and provide training through annual media symposiums and the Future of Journalism High School Media Awards. Would you like to learn more? Find us at utahcollegemedia.org. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Students in Focus. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode. And you can check out past episodes at UEN Video. Don't forget, you can submit your film to be featured here on our YouTube channel. Catch you next time.